I don't know. I think he's circling. Hey, he's coming back. Alaska 229, traffic alert, traffic 12 o'clock, three miles southbound. That's between 80 case 1,300, type unknown. What's up, guys, and welcome back to ATC Point of View. My name is Lex, and I'm a former military air traffic controller in the Marine Corps. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and take the time to like and subscribe to this channel. It really means a lot to me. And in this video, things got out of hand. An aircraft went through the Class Bravo airspace of LAX International Airport, and things got pretty crazy. So let's check it out. Sir. Uh, aircraft 1,100 feet, uh, three miles east of LAX airport. Who's the uh, aircraft three miles east of LAX? In Tower, Alaska 229, mile and a half from Lima. Alaska 229, LA Tower, wind 2306, runway 25 left, Kirtland. land. Two land, 25 left, Alaska 229. Please 16, are you on a call? 16, I call. All right, we just had a TCA violator uh, possible near midair. Uh, just let me know. Roger, we're at you. He's uh, three mile final, two four. Um, he's, I don't know, I think he's circling. He's coming back. Alaska 229, traffic alert, traffic 12 o'clock, three miles southbound. That's between 80 case 1,300, type unknown. It does have a transponder there. Nobody is talking to that aircraft, including approach control. Do you have that traffic in sight? So far, everything seemed normal until the air traffic controller noticed a blimp on his tower radar display that nobody was talking to. So the first thing anybody would do is try to reach out on a frequency by saying the position of the aircraft and say, hey, are you on the frequency? Who are you? What are you doing? But unfortunately, that aircraft was not on frequency. But the next thing to do at airports that have law enforcement helicopters would be to contact them. And luckily for the air traffic controller, there was already one airborne. However, he was going out to a mission still you know, the officer was still willing to help out. But when the air traffic controller was in the process of telling him where the aircraft is, he observes the aircraft turning back towards his final, towards the Alaska Airlines aircraft that he just cleared to land earlier. And a great job by air traffic controller seeing that and giving a safety alert or a traffic alert as soon as he saw that. And a traffic alert is last resort for air traffic controllers. When pilots hear traffic alert, it grabs all their attention. Yeah, we got him in sight at uh, 12 o'clock and, uh, yeah, going southbound. Okay, Alaska 229, thank you. Helicopters for police 16. Police 16. Yeah, what was the current location of that aircraft, sir? He's over Hawthorne Airport right now, 2100 southbound. Don't know if he's going to continue towards uh, Torrance. Um, He's on downwind to Hawthorne now at 2,000 feet. Yeah, he's, he appears to be lost. Okay, Alaska 229, he has exited the airspace. Wind 2306, runway 25 left, clear to land. Clear to land, 25 left, yeah, you're calling him at 1,300 feet. He's a lot higher than that. Yep, he did climb up. Okay. Please 16, if you're southbound, he's at your 12 o'clock, 4 miles. Yeah, 16, I got a tally ho on that uh, aircraft, and I got a sister ship to the south. Coming up the Harbor Freeway, we'll uh, see if we can make contact. Thank you. All right, so luckily, the Alaska Airlines aircraft uh, had them in sight, which really avoided a, a head-on collision, which would have been disastrous because as an air traffic controller, that's the last thing you want to experience while you're on position. So it was good. The pilot had them in sight and was still able to land. Now the air traffic controller is trying to coordinate with the Police 16 helicopter and see they can figure out where this aircraft is going and uh, what he's doing. So he's giving them the position. It looks like he's about to land at Hawthorne Airport, which is uh, slightly southeast of LAX. Uh, so they're trying to coordinate with law enforcement and I tried possibly uh, meet him on the ground and uh, get his information. But let's continue to this last part. LA Tower for Police 16. Police 16. Yeah, verify you want us to uh, ramp check that gentleman, that individual at Papa. Affirmative. He looks like he's trying to land there. He's on a one-mile final for Hawthorne. Copy. We got a sheriffs so are going to be uh, doing that for us, and uh, yeah, we'll switch over. Affirmative. Yeah, we'll need all this information if they're able to get on the airport and, and get it from them. All right. So as that's expected, 
they're going to ramp check the aircraft, uh, meaning as soon as he lands and gets on the ramp, law enforcement is uh, going to meet him there and uh, get all of his information and uh, pass along the ATC. They can't really arrest him unless he stole the aircraft or something like that. But for airspace violation, the FAA controls that. So basically, once the air traffic controller gets all his information, they're going to report him to the FAA, writing a report, uh, telling him exactly what happened. And then most likely that pilot will either get his license suspended or revoked. All in all, this situation could have been a lot worse. Pilot obviously seemed lost. And he was originally looking for Hawthorne Airport. But, you know, the LAX and Hawthorne is so close to each other. Yes, I kind of understand the confusion. However, Hawthorne doesn't have nearly as many runways as LAX. And the type of aircraft as well that go into LAX are completely different from Hawthorne. So, you know, it's kind of hard also to see how they can make that confusion. But still, mistakes happen. Pilots need to learn from them. But certain mistakes you can't come back from because you might die. So, great video to watch. Good that it turned out great. But if you guys enjoyed this video, hit the like, subscribe button. I appreciate all the support I've been getting. As always, peace.